expectation uh, because the, it's the first drone show. What were well, you expecting? I, I know I know that I didn't want to put politicians or logos or you know just commercials, commercials in the sky because everyone's been doing it and you know they do it really well. Yeah. Whenever I work, I like to do something different. So they said I could, and then I met Luna Sky. <laughs> <laughs> and that um, that changed everything. It really did because when we really realized, um, you know, what we could do, it got really exciting. It got mm. really exciting. So you, as an artist, uh, how do you see the drones as a tool? What it gives you, like what possibilities uh, do you I see? I think it's uh, unlimited right now. I, don't, I think that I can't. This morning we were all talking about it. So I think this is the first step. And, Everyone in the world should see it this way. I'm sure people will copy this now, but there's, it's it's a it's like anything else. Somebody does something, but you know, as far as where it goes, I think this is a huge, huge like like breakthrough in the flying capabilities and using the sky as a canvas. That, that's huge. This and with your technology and, and your expertise, I have no idea where it'll go. Because you'll just keep coming up with more ideas. Yeah, well, that's real art is the abstraction always is, because then everybody is seeing something great, but they're seeing yeah. also something different. And you're not being told what to think, right? Uh, and yeah, so, yeah. Because when you're being told what to think, you get bored, especially yeah. in this day and age. So. I agree with you. Like when I was under the drones the other night, I saw Goofy from Disney. Really? Know? I saw him up in the sky, <laughs> waving at me. And Whoa. then, and then, and then you know, last night I was over there and I saw, um, I saw something completely different. Each night I've seen something different, even though it's there's a form. It's yeah, like yeah. a painting. It's really painting in real time. What was your first expression of the life, life of drone show? Not on the screen, not on the Olympic pile. Uh, I saw I saw some some filming of a drone show, a music video in Los Angeles, a few years ago before mm -hmm. the pandemic, out in the desert one night, oh. and it was okay. It, it, I saw we, we we I've tried to do other drone shows, but in in, in you know um, there's a lot of egos in America, so it became very. Um, difficult to break through with new ideas because everybody it was like they didn't really want my idea they wanted just to show me how smart they were does, does that make sense yeah like showing yeah. off yeah so i didn't really participate but i went and saw a, a few other drone shows but i was like it's okay because when you see it just flying in the sky with no context mm -hmm. you forget about it you know yeah. you go wow and then you walk away, you won't think about it again. Hmm. Return into chaos. Tell us about the idea. Well, um, it's really about nature and it's about um, how birds in flocks, the murmuration flies through um, you know, the skies. It's like fish do the same hmm. thing under the sea. I, I think that under the sea and the sky to me are the same. Like the same, yes, they're the, they're the same idea, and it's the same kind of canvas. To me, it's virtual reality when I watch those things or go under, seeing that because it's you're in another world, you know, because the animals are you know, really in charge. But the idea of the chaos when they're flying, there's order, and, and and at times the order turns into chaos, and then the chaos turns into order, and it's like humans when you watch traffic. On, on the street, so that's really the inspiration was to, to, and then add the music to let the let the viewer separate himself from reality. Music always brings everything, you know, to another place. Yeah. They're heavy young heathens is the name of the of the two guys oh. and their brothers and they live where I live in California and they're composers and they worked on a lot of really high 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 profile hmm. projects in film and television and so I went to them and uh, 
I had an idea what I wanted, and then we started going through all the music and we put this together. They're brilliant. So there was a huge library of, mm -hmm. of, of all kinds of pre-recorded things they have done before. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to like, it's almost like a chef with the ingredients. And I told them I wanted, you know, in the beginning, I wanted it to be really emotional. So that's why you have the choir and then the single voice. I, but I didn't know it was going to be that until they said, here, listen to this. And so we went step by step by step. So the first step, I, we broke it up into f three four minute sections. Mm -hmm. So the first four minute section um, really set the tone and brought people in because you're you feeling something just from the woman's voice. Tomorrow night, we, we do the kaleidoscope. And the kaleidoscope really is based, it's the, the imagery is Islamic because we're here. It's, it's part of the Islamic art. Um, the, um, the idea really is for people in the park and around the city to be able to, on their phones, it's a call and a response. So that when the tones sound and the drones light up, you have a chance to then answer it and remember. I didn't um, make a leaderboard and I didn't make it competitive and I didn't, I didn't want anybody right. to win. I wanted everybody to maybe have fun and think. So, you know, that, that's kind of how, what's that about? That's why we don't have the loud music here in the speakers, right? Yeah, it's a bit more, it's a quieter piece. It lasts 52 minutes, because in the beginning they asked me to break a Guinness Book of World Records, and the only one I could find that maybe we could break was um, a, the longest continuous drone show. Hmm. So that's what we put together. And without Luma Sky's help, I couldn't have done it. You know, I mean, it's really actually more difficult, I think, than, I don't know, I mean, you can tell me, but uh, the idea of 500 up, 500 down, 500 up, 500 down, it, it's pretty complicated. Yeah, technically it was uh, also the one of the complicated, yep. the most challenging thing for us. Yeah, yeah, but it looks, I saw it the other night, and it looked beautiful. It was <laughs> and they were very happy, all the, the minister of culture, and everyone was very happy. <laughs> the most challenging was, we started doing the files using particles, right? And, yeah. and we were talking to again and again, and we were talking to um, to Tony Anton and um, the hooligan, as I told, I was told he was called, um, <laughs> and then and the rest of your team, and understanding how the programming worked. Once we understood the different programs we needed to get to deliver to you, we were down our path. It became easier. But then one afternoon we sent something to you and it came right back and they're going, no, 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 you're going too fast. The velocities and there's suddenly the screen from St. Petersburg comes up and for the first time, every drone had a number. It was yeah. like there's 1801, 563, 654. And they were all like moving around and then suddenly I realized it looked like people to me. And I, and I realized they were in the air, and there's 2,000 numbers. And I went, oh. So now it wasn't abstract anymore. It, it became very real in terms of every second had to be correct. So that was when it became really challenging. And we might have had maybe two weeks to go to fix it, you know? And, and you know, with your help, we fixed it. I mean, it was really, it wasn't like a problem. But it was the challenge of understanding what we had to know, what we had to do, you know, yeah. to, to keep to keep the creative. What is your favorite part uh, oh, in the show? Probably octopus. Octopus. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, so it's really it, you know. Well, you know how it started, and I'm so happy we changed it. The movement is so. It's actually really scary. And when it, it feels like it's coming down to just surround you like an alien spaceship or, yeah. you know, this monster coming out of the sky. But with the music, it gets, it really has a personality. So yeah. that, that's probably my favorite. But the ending is also just an opening. I mean, mm -hmm. all of it for me, there isn't really any part I don't like or I think is slow. 
it just holds my attention for 12 minutes. If uh, you could be a magician, actually you are the magician. <laughs> <laughs> to me you are. <laughs> uh, and you could uh, take off the limitation, the technology limitation or I don't know, like other limitation of the show. Other show. What limitation you would be get rid of? I'd probably want to understand how to animate it so that you actually can maybe make a movie on this guy and you have dialogue and music and the the drones are actually acting like animation. And and, and I'm hoping maybe one day you'll have even smaller drones. The pixels become really close together mm-hmm. and so the resolution really becomes incredible. It's almost like, you know, you you've energized the air. Image just shows up, and it's all done with drones, you know. Hologram, right? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Thank you so much, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. So Thank the team. And to yay, you, everybody. To Thank yeah. you so much. You guys Take should be really proud of the work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I really, I, I'm speechless about how great it is. <laughs> Thank you.